In this demo, we will see how to do simultaneous time domain frequency domain optimization of a Simulink model. In this case, it's an F-14 longitudinal flight control system with subsystems for aircraft dynamics, G-force calculation, actuator dynamics, wind gas, and the controller. Our goal is to optimize controller parameters KF, KI, KA, and KQ to meet three design objectives. We want to have good alpha response to pilot stick request. We want to have low G-forces acting on the pilot at the higher frequencies, and we want to have nice pitch rate loop performance to provide good handling qualities. We specify those design requirements using the three blocks that you see here. Let's take a look at this block. Here we specify the step response characteristics we want to accomplish. So we specify initial and final value for our step, rise time, settling time, and percent overshoot. This block comes from Simulink Design Optimization Library, where we also have two other blocks um, which let us specify custom bounds on a signal and track the signal against the reference. The frequency domain blocks that we see here, let's take a look at one of them, specify the input and output signals that we use to calculate a specific trans function. In this case, the trans function is from the pilot request to the g-force acting on the pilot. We calculate this trans function at simulation time zero, and we want the transfer function magnitude to be less than zero dBs in the frequency range from 5 to 100 radians per second. We similarly set up the pitch rate loop block, and both of these blocks come from the product called Simulink Control Design, which we use to linearize the model and use the resulting trans function to evaluate against frequency domain requirements. In the block library for that product, we see that we have some additional blocks that let us specify other frequency domain requirements like damping ratio and crossover frequency and gain and phase margins. Once we have specified the design requirements using the blocks, we can start the response optimization tool by going into Tools, Response Optimization. This brings up the graphical user interface for the response optimization tool. We see that we automatically get the three plots for our design requirements, and now to run the optimization process, we need to follow the workflow from the left to the right in this tool. First, we need to specify which parameters we want to tune. So we add the desired variables and specify, if you want to, the minimum and maximum values. So in this case, we want to keep the sign of all those gains the same. So we specify the minimum and maximum values accordingly. And once we are done, we add this variable to the design optimization workspace. We can now select which particular requirements we want to use in the optimization process. In this case, we want to use all three. If you need it, we can add new requirements by adding any of the three time domain requirements we talked about or any frequency domain requirements as we just saw. Or if you need to add custom requirement, you can lock any model signals and then write your own custom requirement. Let's plot the current response to see how far we are from meeting the requirements. So we see that we violate some of the requirements a little bit. And then we can configure the optimization options, add some additional plots to look at during optimization, or simply start the optimization process. The tool automatically starts adjusting all four parameters that we want to tune and shows us the optimization progress in this plot. It shows us the number of iterations, the number of times we evaluate the cost function, and how far we are from meeting all of the constraints. As the optimization runs, we also get um, new lines in all those plots that show us the intermediate results. After four iterations, very quickly the optimization converges. We now have the design that meets all of the requirements, and the Simulink model parameters are automatically updated with tuned parameter values. So now we have a Simulink model that meets the design requirements for um, our longitudinal flight control system. That concludes the demo.